All right, man, peace. You know, brothers, when you examine just about every sport, there are always great athletes who get lost in the annals of time, normally because within their era, even though they were very good to great, there was always another player of their likeness who was greater than them. Many people today don't even understand how great a player Clyde Drexler was because he played in the shadow of Michael Jordan. Players like Mitch Richmond as well are lost in the annals of time because they happen to play during the time period of Michael Jordan. Damian Lillard may end up being one of those players in this generation because he plays in the shadow of Steph Curry as well as Russell Westbrook. We'll find out. Hopefully for Dame, he'll be able to steal a title before his career is over. But in the meantime, due to the fact that there are other players that are slightly greater than him, he is constantly prompted to validate himself to many of the more ignorant members of the mainstream liberal sports media. So anyway, there was a reporter who asked Dame Little if he thought that he was one of the best players in the NBA. And Dame responded, of course, and it's all facts. And he recently sat down with Rachel Nichols to explain how that interaction came to be with the reporter. So anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Welcome back to the jump. Check your clocks at home, folks, because it's Dame time right now. We are thrilled to have four-time All-Star, All-NBA first-team guard Damian Lillard joining the show. The dynamic between Dame Lillard and Steph Curry reminds me so much of the dynamic between Clyde Drexler and Michael Jordan when they played back in the late 80s into the 90s. Now, Clyde was very fortunate that unlike Dame, he was actually able to get the Portland Trailblazers to the finals twice. Unfortunately for Clyde, that Portland Trailblazer team had a very low basketball IQ. As talented as they were, their basketball IQ was very low. So they lost to a couple of championship teams that happened to have a very high basketball IQ. That being the Bad Boy Pistons and later on the Michael Jordan-led Chicago Bulls. Fortunately for Clyde, he was able to win a championship with the Rockets in 95. I'm not quite sure if Dame is going to be that lucky, though. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. We appreciate it. I appreciate y'all having me. Absolutely. We got the heavy hitters up here for you, but I want to start. I, I can talk Raiders with you. We'll talk basketball in a minute. But have you spoken to Antonio <laughs> Brown since the trade went down? Because I know how hyped you were about that. Absolutely. I was recruiting him. I was doing all <laughs> that. Uh, so when I got the news, I was like, I was juiced about it. I seen him go on Instagram live. I was on his live. We was. I tell you, boy, Antonio Brown, he is crazy like a damn fox. <laughs> that man had a blonde mustache and one green dreadlock in his head. And as soon as he gets signed by the Raiders, he goes back to a relatively regular look. Chopping it up on Instagram live. Nice. I can't wait. I'm ready. Raider Nation, baby. Be back. Now, I know that CJ McCollum is a diehard Cleveland Browns fan, and he's had a lot to crow about in the last week or two with free agency. You got The Browns look like they're going to be pretty good this season. You guys already have a bet going on what's going to happen this season? We actually do have a bet, but the bet that we put in place was before all the Odell Beckham news and all that stuff came. Yeah, Odell's probably going to be a game changer for them. I think that with their quarterback, Baker Mayfield, starting the entire season, at least prospectively, barring injury, he should be their starter for the duration of the season, as well as the addition of Odell Beckham, and then the addition of Kareem Hunt at running back as well. They should have one of the top five offenses in the NFL, at the very least one of the top five. Okay, so we trying to figure out the we trying to figure out the, the new contract situation. <laughs> you gotta make a little tweak after that happened, right? You make you make the arrangement yeah, under one thing to... and <laughs> it's different with OT. Yeah, things change. Oh no. Things change. Dang, what up? This is T Mac boy. What's up, T Mac? Yesterday you uh we ran a quote about you saying you was one of the best players in the league. What prompted you to say that? Now I agree with you, but what prompted you to come out and say that? Yeah. I, I was kind of irritated by that because it, when I kept seeing the quote, it, was, it made it seem like it was a cry out and it wasn't. Um, before, before we played the Clippers last week in LA, the guy asked me, he said, you know, Dane, what do you have to say to people who might be offended or feel a way about you uh, when you mention yourself with the best players in the league? And I was like, what do you mean? You know, I'm like, <laughs> the reason why the reporter asked you that, brother, is because different people have different standards for what they consider amongst the best. Like me, myself, I, I always say that there are only four superstars in the NBA. 
that being Steph Curry, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Kawhi Leonard. Now, after this season, there may be some rejockeying because LeBron James is probably going to have to fall out of that top rung. That's probably what that person was getting at. There are certain people who are more exclusive than others. There are people who might consider you a superstar. I don't consider you a superstar because you've not done enough in the playoffs. You certainly have not reached the finals. You've never won a regular season MVP award. Right now, James Harden, Giannis Antetokounmpo, they're starting to brush against that superstar status or that superstar label. But they both have to do a lot in this up and coming playoffs for them to cement themselves, in my view, on that level. You have not done that yet. So that's probably why he was saying that. What he really was saying is, how do you feel about people who don't believe that you're on the level of Steph Curry, even though you probably believe that you are? I'm one of the best players. <laughs> that's, that's facts. Right. <laughs> that's what I said to him. And then he just put the quote out there like I was, like I just came out of nowhere right, and said right. it. Like I was it is fact that you're one of the best players, but maybe his definition of best is not quite what yours is. I was trying to prove it to him or cry out about it, so I kind of... He irritated me with that because I don't even, I don't really know him, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> well, there was no doubt on this set that everyone agreed with you, so, you know, but no no irritation on this end from that kind of quote. Not at all. Yeah, not at all, I ain't like how he put me out there like I was crying out about it, man. <laughs> no, it's all good. It hey, I just that. wanted to ask you, and I, I appreciate what you said, man. I think it's all true. I think they forget about you guys sometime out in Portland, but... Yeah, because they like a lowercase version of the Warriors. One of the reasons why Portland is such a forgettable team is because they play so much like the Golden State Warriors, or at least I should say they try to, with their guard-oriented offense. Of course, they have far less ball movement, things of that nature, which is one of the reasons why they're not on the level of the Warriors. But they try to be a microcosm of Golden State, and they fall short. So it makes them very forgettable. But my question to you is, what would be considered a successful postseason for you guys um to to make a real run you know i think that's not a good answer if i'm a portland trailblazer fan i want to hear dame lillard say success for us is that we have the aspiration to win a championship it's not like they're a team that averages 22 23 years of age dame is pushing up on 30 i'm not quite sure how old he is right now but he has to be pushing up on 30 because i believe he did three or four years in college and he was drafted, what, in 2011? So he's pushing up on 30 now. When someone asks him what he expects to do in the playoffs, it should be, we have championship aspirations. Even if he's not quite sure if his team is on the level to win a championship. When I look at that Portland Trailblazer roster, they have a lot of talent on that team. Other than Golden State, there's no team in the Western Conference that anyone can say, Portland definitely cannot beat them. And if Portland were to even beat Golden State, it would surprise me, but I would not be absolutely floored by it. They have a lot of talent on that squad. I think uh, we've been out of the first round a few times, but I think um, trying to get to the Western Conference Finals, I think that would be, in my eyes, you know, to at least get there would be successful. Um, we know it's possible. Uh, we know that it's tough in the Western Conference, so, you know, sometimes you get in the first round and you get a, a tough matchup like we did the last few years and you lose. It, we know that's possible, but um, in my eyes, I think success will be at least getting, you know, to the Western Conference Finals. Well, you're talking to a guy in Scotty Pippen who came... <laughs> that's not a bad answer, at least to the Western Conference Finals. But, you know, right now, Dame, your sights have to be set on winning a championship. You have to say... We're out to win a championship. This, this close, just a few minutes away from getting to the finals in that Portland uniform. And that city is yeah, just remember. so ready, right, for you guys to make that kind of run. What do you hear from people yeah. around Portland about what they want from you guys this postseason? I mean, you can just tell they're itching for, you know, that postseason success. And, you know, I think when I first got here, um, it was a... There goes Anthony Davis, Mr. I don't have enough help in New Orleans. <laughs> Yo, New Orleans steamrolled that Portland Trailblazer team. All this was, all this season was for Anthony Davis was a huge self-caused embarrassment. It was a thing to like be a t Listening to LeBron James is going to cost him precious years in his career. Because once again, that New Orleans Pelicans team has every bit the amount of talent of the Milwaukee Bucks. So for them to not be anywhere near as successful as Milwaukee is a reflection on Anthony Davis. 
be a team making the playoffs every year. Um, and then we started to do that uh, our first year in the playoffs. Um, we got out of the first round, played the Spurs, lost in the second round. And like going forward, we thought um, we was on schedule to be one of those teams, you know, playing to represent the Western Conference in the finals, you know, going forward. Um, had some change and you know now the past few years we've been in the playoffs but we haven't been able to uh, make a real run at it and um, you know I think we've you know I guess got enough experience um, some hard times you know last season getting swept um, and now we just ready to get back and, and try to really make a run for it. Damn a guy like myself can shoot the ball from 30 pull up from almost half court I never got a cool nickname how do you like the <laughs> Talk about a self brag. T Mac, fall back, bro. Dame has actually accomplished more in his career than you ever did in yours, believe it or not. Tracy McGrady, to me, and a lot of people might not like this, he's one of the more overrated players of the last 20 years, and he was a favorite of mine back in the day because he was a great scorer. But never once was he able to lead his team out of the first round. Normally, transcendent players find a way to lead their team out of the first round. Even if you're just a single player on that team, you can lead your team out of the first round if you're truly a transcendent player. That was the issue that I had when they put him in the Hall of Fame over Chris Webber. I understand that Chris Webber has stepped on some toes. He may have pissed off some coaches or some media members during the various stops that he made while he was in the NBA. But everywhere that Chris Webber went while he was in his prime, he turned that team into a team that was at the very least a playoff team. He went to the playoffs in Golden State in his one year there. He went to the Washington Bullets, a moribund franchise, led them to the playoffs in 97. He goes to Sacramento, an even more moribund franchise, and leads them not only to the playoffs, but really at the cusp of going to the world championship round. And they got robbed by the referees in 2002. So Chris Webber deserved to be in the Hall of Fame ahead of Tracy McGrady. Nothing against his brother. Tracy McGrady was a dynamic scorer for about five years before his knees just started to destroy themselves. But um, and he was an above average defender as well. But should he have been in the Hall of Fame ahead of Chris Webber? No. And has he ever accomplished anywhere near what Dame Lillard has accomplished in the playoffs? No, he has not. Dame is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer as well. You like the logo uh, Lillard nickname that people have been giving? <laughs> hey, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Um, just because I... I feel like it, you know, people pay attention to that. It's a shot that I, that I end up taking it a lot. Um, the way I'm, I'm guarded sometimes. I Logo Lillard, is that some new shit? Nothing against Dame Lillard, but um, he takes way too many of them long ass jump shots. There's a reason why he only shoots about 42% every season. Once again, he's the lowercase Steph Curry. Steph Curry shoots about 48, 49% almost every season. I think that's the a pretty high quality shot for me because I, I got a lot of time to take the shot and I can shoot from the distance pretty easy so I I like it man I like the I like that absolutely and look yeah what's what's a good shot has changed a lot in the NBA right coaches say what used to they used to say ah that's a bad shot I don't think there is a bad shot if you're making them consistently yeah, and you're making them from that logo over and over again even in the all-star game pretty amazing um, we do have to play one round of one of our favorite games here at the jump. A little, what were you thinking? We bring the former players on because they have a whole career full of what were you thinking. You're still mid-career. So we're just going to ask you one. We are going to ask you, Damien, what were you thinking when your son, Dame Jr., started imitating the Dame Time celebration on his wrist? I was like... That's my son. <laughs> That's <laughs> my boy. That was the moment I knew he was mine. There wasn't no denying it after that. <laughs> Brother said, wasn't no denying it. Was it in doubt for a hot second, bro? <laughs> I, don't uh, know. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen him in those Lillard Adidas, no so he's it. definitely your son. <laughs> no question. Yeah. He, I mean, he's adorable. You and I have talked about him a bunch. He's such a joy. Um, I, I love the conversations you and I have had about him. And just sort of how he gives you perspective off the court. And both of the guys sitting next to me are fathers. And, and they know you put so many into the game for so many years. It is literally your entire world. And yet then you have this person come into your life that changes your perspective a little bit, right? Yeah, I mean, you like you said, um, 
You know, we work our whole lives to be professional basketball players, and then we get here, and it consumes your life. You got practice, you got media, you got travel and games and endorsements and, you know, all these things off the floor, um, things that the team signs you up for. Um, once you turn the TV on and you might be watching another game and at halftime they're talking about you and your team. So it's almost like you can't escape it. So uh, early in my career, like everything I saw on TV, I would, you know, take bad losses and bad games home with me, frustrated, up all night. And now, you know, since I have my son, it's made it, you know, super easy. I have a bad game, I go home and I'm just like, you know, <laughs> on to the next one. What you mean? They talking about me on TV. Oh well, like I'm playing with my son. I'm just sitting there, like. Bro, if I was you, I would not give two shits if they was talking about me on TV. Of course, your son puts things in in their proper perspective, but you're making eight figures a year. I wouldn't give a shit about what they got to say. I really don't care. You know, so <laughs> well, he doesn't it's, care. It's, That's it's, for sure. It's giving me a, yeah, exactly. He don't care. He like this dad. So, you know, I don't, he don't care. I'm good. You had, yeah, I'm you had good. some video up there you posted of him trying to wake you up after a long road trip. <laughs> Sitting on your face. <laughs> that was pretty yeah, amazing. Yeah, it wasn't a loaded diaper man. <laughs> uh, 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 it actually was. Uh, that's the color for it. It actually was. Uh, 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 he had a onesie on, though, uh, so I was protected. <laughs> the behind the scenes secrets you learned on the job. Dame, thanks so much for joining us today. <laughs> Dame's son was like, Daddy, you play like ass tonight. <laughs> today we yeah. always love when you stop yeah. by i'm gonna come see you in the postseason or maybe a little bit before best of luck to Good you luck, yeah. we will be sure. following <laughs> i appreciate it thank you but anyway that's basically it on that we'll see how things go for dame lillard and his portland trailblazers squad as the playoffs commence so peace